Lake Lanier is a Georgia landmark, but buried below the surface is the town of Oscarville. And now we're getting a deep dive into the town's history. Here's 11 Alive's Latasha Givens. When we started working on this story, we set out to track down descendants of Oscarville. Weeks later, we found a family who could trace back their roots four generations. They shared with us stories that were handed down about what the all black town was like, including the night that led to its destruction. It was set on fire by night riders after they say a white woman was raped. Then later it was covered by the body of water we now know as Lake Lanier. May Crow is buried here at this Gainesville Cemetery, but the trail of destruction following her death stretches into the land surrounding Forsyth County, buried beneath these waves of Lake Lanier, where in 1912, nearly every black resident was forced out. That includes people living in an old black town called Oscarville. The community was formed in the late 1800s during the Reconstruction era. There was a very strong community feeling among the blacks about 300 kids, children, <laughs> that um, went to some of the schools that were the black schools, um, and it was uh, closely connected to the churches. Georgia history teacher Lisa Crosby says Oscarville was a thriving black community, full of carpenters, blacksmiths, and bricklayers, but farming was the top trade. And so they really had kind of a miraculous farming growth here while the rest of the state was really struggling. But then residents were abruptly forced off their land. Now the flashpoint, I think, is 1912. This takes us back to the death of May Crow. The 19-year-old white woman was found dead in the woods near Oscarville, presumably after being raped. Typically, the answer to white girls being raped was go to the black community and just start blaming people. By nightfall, terror began to reign over Oscarville. So from there, um, the rage and hatred in the community, um, mobs got together and they were called night riders and they were um, riding throughout Oscarville and driving out the black community. And the night turned deadly, you know. They were waking up by fires outside, um, uh, fire bombs thrown in the church. Filmmaker Bob Mackey recaptures those horrific nights in an upcoming television series. Well, any, any time anything happened, Guess where everyone would go? To the church. Well, they attacked the church. People were hung, uh, lynched. Mackey's series features stories of direct descendants like George Rucker, who can trace his family back four generations to Oscarville. He tells the story of his great grandfather, Bert Oliver, and the entire family being forced off their land. Night riders came through. They had to leave everything. The main thing they left was property. My grandfather had 100 acres. Rucker says many relatives died as they tried to flee. So when they got to the Chattahoochee River, from what I understand, they were told when the mob got up on the bridge, they were told that they either had to swim or drown. Most of them didn't make it. My grandfather, one of them that did make it, he lost some brothers and sisters. He says his relatives who survived settled in Gainesville. From what my mother told me, buried all of them, he would sit and tell her this story and uh, he would just sit and cry. Crosby says whites in the area took over the remaining properties. She says Oscarville farmers were specifically skilled in raising poultry, which set the pace for Gainesville eventually becoming poultry capital of the world. You have a farm already going and you had free land so you just take it. Rucker says his great grandfather married his second wife, Beulah, and they built this school that still stands in Gainesville today. By the late 1950s, the Buford Dam was built and Lake Lanier was formed, covering up Oscarville and swallowing most of its history. Many believe Lake Lanier is haunted because of the high number of drownings. We spoke to officials who tell us because there is an entire town that includes structures and even forest areas with trees that are 60 feet tall, it makes it more difficult to navigate through and someone can easily become trapped in debris, leading them to drowning. We have so much more on this story on our website.